How are you doing? Welcome to the weekly woodworking wrap-up review, episode number 39. I'm your host, David Picciuto, and this is a show where we highlight active woodworkers in the community and talk about the latest woodworking news and events. Today, we're going to talk about the most recent and interesting woodworking videos, the Incra iBox jig, Lincoln Logs, this guy sitting next to me, and much more. So grab a drink and stick around. All right, so today I got my buddy Sean here. Sean, why don't you tell him who you are and what you brought? Hi, I'm Sean, um, part of the Modern Woodworkers Association, another Toledo woodworker here. Met Dave through, uh, through woodworking. Uh, <laughs> and uh, today uh, I brought over, that just caught my eye at the store, Clown Shoes Pecan Pie Porter, an American porter. Oh, yeah. There you go. Two cameras going today. All right. Yeah. Right there. Uh, no Chuck. Let's give this a shot. Cheers. Cheers. Ooh, that's really good. That's sweet. It, yeah. yeah, and that's I like good. a nice dark beer. Sean just lives a few minutes away from me, and uh, we uh, we took the trip to Woodworking in America together, the eight and a half hour drive, Nothing. and he didn't get sick of me. Like he, he came back. Uh, so, well, let's show a couple things that you that you brought. All right, yeah, I just I the, what I've got going on right now is really kind of minor um, crafty things, but um, I brought along something I made here. This is a a bowl I made, um, just some funky little splines that when you cut them into a bowl, they kind of curve around. I'm really proud of that one, actually. So you have your blank, and you're you're cutting through the blank, mm -hmm. yeah, and then um, adding a little. Sorry, if I can get that angle, if you look down there, you can kind of see how that angle goes there, and uh, it's just three splines, and then when it bowls out, I just I I cut it out on purpose in a way that they would cross when you cut them around. So it's actually a gift to my wife. She very nice. Liked it. Now. Um, obviously, that's cut on a power lathe, but yes. usually you are using hand tools only, correct? Yes, I, I work in a basement shop much like this, actually a little smaller than this if you cut it off over there. Um, and just because I've got kids and I don't like dust all that much, I, I work primarily by hand. Um, just just cuts down on noise and everything. I can do it when my, when my kids are sleeping. Chris Wong. Uh, had the shop stool build off. Mm -hmm. I'm actually sitting on my shop stool right here. Lift it off. Come on. There there we go. go. Look at that. Right. Out of plywood. Uh, mm -hmm. Use patterns. And then you brought your shop stool from right. so, last uh, year. This one I did, talking about hand tools, I did this all with hand tools. Now, that's, uh, they call it the Chinese stool. It was in a Popwood article a couple years ago. And um, I'm happy to be an award winner. I actually won. Careful there. Uh, <laughs> it got me. I won. Um, I forget a subscription for it. I forget what level it was, but I got I got somebody's award. It's not done, honestly. The the seat cracked as I was turning it. Actually, I turned it over here, and um, so this it's got epoxy in it, and I still want to dish it out a little bit and give it some paint. But otherwise, that it's a little uh, funky joinery. Go ahead and try one yourself. It's super <laughs> duper fun. <laughs> it's a it looks pretty complicated for hand tools to get all those angles it, correct. It, <laughs> relative dimensioning is everything. All I had was a set of angles and set an adjusting, you know, adjusting uh, square to it and used that on the piece as I was drilling through and then refining with chisels and yeah, it all worked out. You can actually still see the lines there where I was, that's where I knew I needed to cut and the tenon is full through there. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's complicated. And you, then it's just a big jigsaw. Everything has to go together all at once. Oh yeah, the yeah. seat and the and the stretchers. No, everything. no multi part. No, it, it's yeah. It was it's so it's high glue, <laughs> just uh, to um, more open time for it. But yeah, very nice. I'm real proud of that. It's just shorter. That's why I'm not sitting on it. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's a lot lower. So what do you use it for? I, I actually sit. I can sit on my bench because my bench is only about thirty inches off the ground, and so I can actually work on my bench. I was actually sawing on my Moxon vice um, the other day, sitting on it. So I was, I'm, it's literally, even when I'm sitting on it, I, I, my work surface is chest level-ish. Nice. So I can work. And good, good height. Yeah, and I can get close on, you know, when, I'm, when I need to. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Cheers, Cheers again. I have to be careful. Every time I take a drink, it, it, it creates this little wave and then gets me in the eye. Yeah, that's a... <laughs> See? <laughs> that's that's going to be fun. <laughs> It's it's a bulbous glass. Yeah. <laughs> it's a sipping glass. <laughs> All right. So last Friday I put out a video. It, it was this birdhouse Lincoln log video. These are all 
Lincoln Logs that I made. This was part of the Summers Woodworking Birdhouse Contest. I'm not really eligible to win because I didn't follow the rules. I didn't read the rules until after I made it, but you're supposed to stamp it with the Summers Woodworking logo, and then you're not supposed to stain or paint the inside for the safety of the birds. Even if I did read the <laughs> rules, I probably would have broke them because I've been doing that all my life. So don't worry, I'm not gonna kill any birds. This is not gonna go out till next spring. So by that time, it should all off gas and should be safe. So there's the, there's the main house and then the garage. Birds need a garage, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I know, I know bird enthusiasts are gonna be like, well, what bird is gonna use this house? It's way too big and the hole's too big. I don't, I didn't, I didn't research it. I just wanted to make Lincoln Logs. It's more about the Lincoln Logs than the, than the birdhouse. So that's what I did. If you wanna see me make this, there'll be a link down below to watch the video. Let's get this out of my way. I got a new toy, Sean. I got the Incra iBox finger joint jig. And this thing is fantastic and it's dusty. Um, if you can see here, this was the, this was the test piece here. It's not actually glued together yet, but it makes beautiful little finger joints very easy. Um, and it does more than just these finger joints. You can adjust it to make different sizes and it makes uh, the adjustment knobs make it, makes it real easy to make different size joints where if you wanted to build a sled on your table saw, you almost need to build a different sled for each size pin that you're using because you need that little, hmm, what is, I guess it's just called a little pin that you would insert in there. Yeah, so, the, the and it allows you to do uh, some fancier finger joints too. They, what uh, Inker calls these spline joints. So every other one would be double the width and then you can insert a piece of contrasting wood in there. So you get like this little repeating pattern. So it's a very cool little jig. I hope to do a video soon on finger joints and box joints using this and then maybe a finger joint sled to show you the difference and to show you why you might want this or why you might not want this. So it's a fun little toy. It's a costly little little guy, but it's definitely worth it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a bunch of wine boxes for some craft shows I have coming up in November and December. And then I'm also going to make Christmas presents. So this is going to make my life a lot easier. So it's for me, it's money well spent and I'm going to make my money back on it. So yeah, fun, fun little guy. Yeah. Does that, um, when, when you're making it wider, do you end up having to take multiple passes if it gets so wide? No, it's, it's, it's made for one pass. So you need to set up your table a saw with, with a, with a dado, right. a dado set. Okay. Dado set, dado set, or, um, using a box, um, table saw blade set. Right. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the, the example that I showed was just a single, single blade. That's super cool. With an eighth inch curve. Right. All right. So those are my new toys. Sean, you ready to get into some videos? Absolutely. All right. First video, the Modolo dining table by Kyle Toth. This thing is super impressive. That's... The base okay. is turned. Right. Uh, and it's segmented, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then he uses uh, a router to cut uh, and, and a circle template to cut out the top. And I don't know if you've ever seen this technique done, no. but he's using this this jig to cut the bevel on the table saw. So the the tabletop is sitting vertical on the table, right. and he's spinning it. Right. Yeah. It's not. He didn't. It, it's not a chamfer. So a chamfering bit wouldn't do it. He really just feathered that edge to give it that relief underneath. So it's a really tight angle from a vertical. So it's just leaning off just a little bit like that. And yeah, it's, it's uh, crazy. Just the, the fact that, yeah, it mounted up. Because that, that's, it's what? He had to climb on top of it when he was cutting it. Yeah. So this thing has to be four foot in diameter. Insane. If, but yeah, amazing. That dude's crazy. He's like 23 years old, <laughs> never worked a real job in his life. He's been a woodworker all his life. Nice. And he, <laughs> he's super, super talented. If you are not familiar with Kyle Toth, find his YouTube channel, find his website, go and look at his portfolio. Amazing stuff. Absolutely. He was nice enough to stop by a couple months back and, and right. co-hosted the show. So you're the, the second co-host of the weekly Woodworking Wrap-Up Review. So I feel... All right. Good job, Kyle. Good stuff. All right. Next video, how to build a bookcase, bookshelf by John Peters. This is a very simple little bookcase, mostly pocket hole joinery. Uh, he's doing a technique. Uh, he's got the, the front legs are part of the face frame. Right. Um, where he, uh, he he joined, the, the legs went down and then the face joined right there and he 
because it's pocket hole and he just yeah. had to stick them together yeah. face to face like that. And so yeah. I, I don't know, that doesn't seem like a common technique for me, but it works well for him. So yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's a built in thing. I think I've seen it before when you've got legs protruding out like that. Um, even if, even if it doesn't go like that and you don't have the sides, so your legs could be your sides mm -hmm. and then your stretchers could go and do that same kind of thing and they yeah. just attach to the legs hitting the ground. Yeah. So, so yeah. Very, very cool. And then there's no back legs because the, the bookshelf is mounted right to the right wall. To the so wall. Exactly. Um, very, very cool. So check that out. How to build a bookcase by John Peters. All right. Next video, building a DIY bathroom wall shelf for less than 20 bucks. This is by Darvin Ovar. It's very, very simple little shelf made out of half inch plywood and scraps. I like that she's she's working outdoors in her carport. And, you know, I hear all the time like, oh, I don't have enough space for a shop or, or whatever, but some people make good use of, Take it of what they have. Yeah, I, I'll say like, because when I do do a little bit of power work, I, I go outside, I'm making cornhole boards and making those cuts absolutely out, outside and all pocket holes. Yeah, I, I would imagine outside. it's safer. You're not breathing in all the dust. It's yeah, not trapped in the and in I don't have to clean it up. And you don't have to clean it up. <laughs> it just yeah. goes on the ground. Yeah, so you have a small shop, and you you make do with what you absolutely. have. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, my my yeah. miter saw is on a cart outside. I don't even have it in the house. It, it, nice. If I'm making dust, it's outside. Yeah, it yep. makes a lot of sense. Yep. I know um, Vic from Veritas has a new book coming out, uh, probably sometime next year, mm -hmm. and I don't remember the title offhand, but it's all about how small space shops and how to utilize that space. Right. So um, I look forward to that. that book from look up the minimalist woodworker. That's yes. what, he's, yes. what he's calling it. So yeah, it's gonna be that minimalist idea. I can't wait for that. Yeah, no, excellent video though. She did great work. Yes, I, I love her videos. They're, they're, uh, they have a good style to them and she does a really good job of, of storytelling in her videos. Right, so. her accent's great. And an accent's great, <laughs> yes. It's just great. Kinetic wooden sculpture. This is awesome. Yeah. I usually only show project videos, but this is just cool, right? Yeah. This guy, you know, if you look through his page, this is, this is very similar. Real short video, just 30, 40 seconds. And it's it's so understated because I can't imagine how much work goes into one oh of these things. Yeah. And I mean, they're beautiful, just in their motion. All these kinetic kinetic things. This one is fantastic. I, and I don't, did the two pieces, did they work together? I don't well, know. I have I, to yeah. study the video more. I know. I have was, to slow it down and study but it, it more. It was, it's, it's super cool. Again, super duper understated. Uh, fantastic work. Just introduced to this channel, and I went and checked out some of his other videos, and they're all just like these crazy, awesome, moving sculptures. And uh, that is by D. Hugger. So check that out. The Merlot Kinetic Wooden Sculpture by D. Hugger. Good, good stuff. All right, so podcast this week, Wood Talk number 198. Technically, number 198 hasn't happened yet. They record at the same time I record the show, so it should be available tomorrow. So we'll see. If it doesn't come out, I just cut this part out of the video. Simple as that. <laughs> the, the magic of editing. Tuesday, September 30th at 9.30 Eastern Standard Time, Bob from I Like to Make Stuff has a show called Brain Pick, and this week's host is Mark Spagnolo, the Wood Whisperer. I think uh, there's lots of people looking forward to that. Lots to learn. Lots to learn. So once again, that is Tuesday, September 30th at 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. The Google Hangout link will be down below. If you're not able to watch it live, I'm sure it will be available shortly thereafter. I've watched all his previous ones. Yeah, yeah he puts them up on YouTube. But he's a real good host. He is. He's, yeah. a, he's good. He keeps it in line. Yeah. He keeps it going. You were on there. Yes. Um, there who was, else has he done? Jimmy uh, Diaresta. Diaresta. Yeah. Is that the, just the two of you so far? Mm. Oh, no. And, uh, Oh, Jay Bates. Yeah, Jay Bates. Yes, exactly. So, yep. yeah, he, he knows how to pick good, good. good guests. Minus me, of course. <laughs> I was the test one. I was the very first one. <laughs> All right. So, I would like to thank Sean, my co-host today. You can find him on Twitter at SeanW78. Spelled the Irish way, S-E-A-N. S-E-A-N. The link would be down. The link will be down below. This is a, whew. It's yeah, getting to it me already. <laughs> Damn it, right in the eye, right, right in the eye. You can take this class home with you when you leave. All right. All right, I put out new wrap up videos every Tuesday and new project videos every Friday. If you like what I do, you can buy me a beer, which is a money donation. I'd like to thank Lee Lim from Carlsbad, California, Rick Devlin from Gainesville, Florida, Bill Trainer from Waterloo, Ontario, Steve French from Lakeland, Florida. Steve, oh, his stuff is amazing. Wait till you see his bird. Birdhouse for the bird bird thing. Oh yeah, awesome, good. I haven't he, seen it. Yet. Oh, he put it up on Facebook today. Oh, Unbelievable. That guy's amazing, and his donation was so generous. I owe Steve so much. He's a great guy. And then we got Ken Halford from Point Say, 
Port, Port St. Saint Lucie. Lu Lucie, Florida. I'm not Simplify wasted. Your I'm name, not really man. drunk, yeah. <laughs> and then Thorsten Falk Jensen from Denmark. All right. <laughs> Notice I skip I skipped the the yep. city cuz yeah, I don't Danish. I don't speak Denmark. Denmark ish ish Danish. All right, that's it. Stay passionate and make something. Cheers. Cheers. No, you see if you've seen Steve French, you know that little guy, Chippy, or whatever. Uh, Woody, Woody. It's like this tall. And it's a birdhouse. The head is a birdhouse. Oh, I got it. But it's full on form. It's yeah. amazing. Nice. Amazing. Let me go stop the camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, Cremona. Did you see his little? He put it up on Instagram. He's making a. Um, oh, yeah. No, I, I, yeah, I did see that. The full blind miter dovetail birdhouse. Uh, <laughs> wow, that's insane. <laughs> He didn't hand cut it, did he?